Okay, we're, we're going to start talking now. So people who want to pay attention should start paying attention. And people who don't want to pay attention should go to a different room. So uh, that, that's how it goes here. Um, this is the Jim and Matthew show. Um, it's part of our series of talks about things that we want to do that are different. Uh, this one is very specific and less hand wavy still. We're kind of like a funnel of specificity and right, that's right. It, is that an actual word? Yes. You play Scrabble a lot. Uh, uh, not to win though. With the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, this is a very specific proposal with a, a pretty concrete thing, um, which is also a big, exciting change. So, uh, yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. You might actually have to hit them. Will that work? No. Oh my goodness. So this operating system is terrible. What operating system are we. Uh, what, what operating system is this running? Yeah. Fedora. <laughs> <laughs> You walked into that one. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty true. All right. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, disk git. Disk git. Yes. It, um, how many people in this room need a background on what disk git is? Or are we all in this room because we know what disk git is? Background and disk it. Awesome. Um, so disk it is basically our shared repository for RPM spec file build information. And so both CentOS and Fedora use Git to keep our spec files. We use them slightly differently, which I think is in further slides. But we basically keep our spec files and patches that RPMs are built in in the system called dist git. I forget exactly what the dist stands for, but um, basically... It's pot distribution, not distributed, right? It's a bunch of repositories. So each package has its own repository in this gigantic um, 20,000 repository thing. What? All right. So um, I clicked the button and it works now. Okay. Awesome. Uh, are we going to the next slide? Let's we did. Yeah, so, right, uh, both CentOS and Fedora have these. Um, we are talking about ways that which we could collaborate better, and this one jumped out at us as hugely obvious um, because... Um, it, it turns out that we both have repositories named things like HTTPD and Grub2 and call it a f at, at least uh, the, what, 6,700 packages that are in uh, the base sent distribution. That, that makes up a pretty yep. decent subset of the uh, 21,000 right. or whatever we made up, whatever number that was. So not only are they overlapping, they're actually things with a direct descendancy, so that's pretty awesome. And so um, not only can we combine and share resources and combine effort, but um, it can enable a lot of interesting things like actually compare using Git to compare between branches across Fedora and CentOS. Um, a lot of uh, possible things that can be enabled, which we are going to talk about further. So um, after a bunch of brainstorming between Matthew and I over several drinks, we came up with this idea entirely on our own without talking to anybody from the community at all. <laughs> right. Uh, so that that was a lie. Um, a lot of people think this is a good idea. Um, I don't think Kevin is here, which is a shame. Um, this is uh, something that was on the Fedora Devel mailing list, um, kind of you know, f um, sort of independent of us talking about uh, our you know, the infrastructure things. I know Peter Robinson also talked had this idea. It's um, it, it's kind of an in the air kind of thing, but it is a very big change. So we wanted to actually make a presentation of it as well. So as Matthew brought up, a lot of us have the same packages. There's a descendancy set up. We've talked uh, or, or we heard earlier from uh, Brendan and Josh about how the waterfall method kind of trickles down. We saw the, the packages coming from Fedora into RHEL. Um, and, and we decided to take a step back and not look at system specific, but just how the packages work. And so if, if we take the Fedora instance and we start with the rawhide packages and you get the absolute latest and greatest, this is the stuff, and I'll, I'll use the phrase that Matthew hates and say the bleeding edge packages. It's rawhide, so okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kevin says no. It, uh. If you guys don't know me, I, I enjoy trolling my own coworkers and the people on my team about this. So it's a lot of fun to just poke. Uh, and then, so from Rawhide, we branch into Fedora releases and we branch at given time. So I'm, I'm not putting numbers on these dots. It could be Fedora 27, it could be Fedora 8. I, it, it doesn't matter. This is the typical flow for how it works. Yeah, and of course, some people have their own different package, cherry picking patches back and forth. So there should be mm -hmm. a whole crazy network of lines. But I, I was going for the simplified yeah. model. And then occasionally out of this, we have the, the Red Hat model or the Realm model where Red Hat looks at a particular release they branch off of that, rel comes out of that, and then at some point down the road, uh, in the case of, what is this, 7.3, I think, there was a, a new rebase in rel of the, the no modules. Um, so periodically, they'll pull again from Fedora and dump that back into a later uh, uh, Y stream release, if I'm using the right terminology for that. But uh, yeah, as previously noted in talks, like that happens very infrequently. Like mm -hmm. the last time was 2014 that the big thing happened, and then it, some stuff you know basically, basically pulled from there. And I was going to say cherry picked, but I want to be very clear. Actually, in this case, it can't be cherry picked because they're just copied over to completely different repos. And so from the rel release, we have the CentOS base, and the, the updates are built, and that's basically how the package set flows at a simplified level. And I look at this as the waterfall because you're coming from Fedora, from Rawhide, into the Fedora release, into the Rel release, into the CentOS release, and there's that, that just direct descendant. And I, I hate the waterfall model. We, we have definitely moved beyond it. It's done great things for us and it's time to let it go. So we need a way to show some feedback in this. We need a way to show what, what Brendan and Josh pitched in their slides. We need a way to get this moving. And so what I came up with, or we came up with as part of this discussion, was yellow dots. I feel like yellow dots just bring everything out here. And essentially what this is, and I, I don't have the full dots because I couldn't come up with a, a decent working example for this, uh, but it is something that we want to get to. So right, right here for the, the yellow dots in this case, we have patches from CentOS going back up into the rel fixes. Whether or not CentOS accepts them, on the mailing list right now, we have people about, call it, twice a week um, sending patches into the CentOS Devel mailing list for various things that are in the base distribution that we've never fixed. We've always looked at it and said, that's a real problem, file that upstream. And they keep sending us patches. If we're doing this right, this gives us a way to actually give some feedback. And we, we can look at Git and look at a pull request model and say, all right, fine, submit this. Red Hat can at least acknowledge that a patch exists. And they, they have told me that they will at least acknowledge that a patch exists. They may not accept the patch, but they will at least pretend that it's there. Um, and so I've tried to show that in the diagram where some patches get merged, but not all of them. So there may be some things that Red Hat looks at and says, yes, we need to solve that, but we're not going to do it that way. So would that involve CentOS then carrying patches that are not in RHEL? Uh, in some instances, that could be a possibility. Um, in some cases, we may drop that patch later on. Um, in the ARM side right now, we do carry patches that are not in RHEL anyhow. So we, we are maintaining some branches that have patches that are not upstream or not in the RHEL as an upstream. You've made Josh put his hand up. No, actually, you did. Oh. Really? I, it was a, it was a thing I was thinking about that I thought I would prompt Jim on. So, uh. um, so in that very very simple diagram, I want to highlight just how simple that is because I ignored all of the stream branching. I ignored Apple and how that feeds in. I ignored all of the layered projects that we deal with for RDO, for Overt, for Gluster. All of that stuff I left off because in the initial attempts at packaging those diagrams into that thing, it looked like a big web of spaghetti and it yeah. just, it was too confusing. So I'm, I understand that is a really simplified diagram. 
and these are some of the most exciting things, actually, though. So, uh, you know, problem diagrams. So, turns out Fedora actually has two different instances of Git right now. There's pagger.io, and then there's source.fedoraproject.org. And that is entirely different from how CentOS uses Git. And so Matthew and I tried to highlight some of the differences that we have here. I can't read them because you have Yes, I, I, I have designed an <laughs> eye chart for this, and I probably should not have done it. Um, but Pagger's traditionally where the, uh, the FESCO tickets live. It's where the, the council makes some decisions, it's where the infrastructure team has a lot of their uh, tasks and, and uh, issues assigned. There's not a whole lot of source code there that is specific to the distribution packages itself. You might find some scripts for infra, you might find some rel -eng stuff, but you're not going to go to pagger.io and find Apache source code for 2.4.9 or whatever. It's just not going to be there. Um, so this gets to be a little tricky for how we can actually combine this stuff when we use Git in different ways. And so Matthew actually came up with Wait, the button, the button stopped. Make the button go, Matthew. There we go. All right, so if we look at the common uses for what we actually can combine, turns out we accidentally named things kind of similarly because we were solving the same problem, just slightly slower at, an, at a different uh, scale and level. So we both use slash RPM slash source RPM name as the, uh, the title for it. CentOS has primarily ignored the master branch. We, we just don't use it. We branch for EL7, we branch for EL6, we have that sort of stuff in place. So that lines up with the current F27, F28, F29, and we can either continue to let Rawhide be master branch, or we can put a document in there that actually describes what the hell we're doing with all of this and where you find different things. This kind of hurts me conceptually because I don't like it when Git branches have meanings other than this is a branch of the code and when people use like a docs branch to put their docs in. Oh, it drives me crazy. Um, so using master branch to document things kind of hurts from that point of view. On the other hand, from a uh, like a workflow point of view, it makes a lot of sense, particularly because the way Pagger works, where it presents the readme and everything, like that's what you see first is the master branch. So m making the master branch explain what's going on with the package, and you as a packager can you know, talk about your package and the, what, the way things work there. Um, and or you know if we've got different people working on different branches there if they're stream branches and things like having the the master describe that um, might be actually useful so I might be able to live with my um, shutter reaction uh, for that reason. No, that decision is there. There isn't an actual decision here for that. These are just the ideas that we are kicking around. Um, and some of the problems out of this, once we started talking about this, then we started looking at, wait, okay, so do we use the Fedora Git for this? Because that'll anger the CentOS side. Well, no, we should use the CentOS Git for this, but that'll anger the Fedora side. All right, you know, it's Git, it's on disk, it doesn't matter. We can mirror this stuff between both of them. So now we have to figure out how to do that. And now we've been looking at the tooling for doing that. And I've been harassing Patrick about looking at the tooling for doing that. And it's been fantastic for interesting <laughs> yeah. definitions of fantastic. Um, turns out that uh, permissions become kind of a big deal with that because on the Fedora side, we really don't want people from the CentOS community just arbitrarily rewriting stuff we that used Fedora to have has active. Ackles, and then we decided we didn't need Ackles. So, uh, <laughs> joke's on us. <laughs> um, maybe we still don't, but we, we need to make sure that doesn't happen mm -hmm. in some way. It still may be a social problem. Right? On, on the other side, on the reverse, we have to make sure because it's, it's Red Hat specifically pushing the code yeah. into git.centos, and that cannot change. Right. So, so we have to make sure this that may that be getting ahead of our slides because we didn't actually write this down. So the actual proposal here is pr right now there's git.centos where Red Hat dumps code and that's where that and then Red, then um, CentOS works from there. Mm -hmm. So this proposal would be for Red Hat to dump code into the Fedora the new shared git in instruct um, which is a big difference because right now we as Fedora own everything in Git there, and there aren't any things which we're not supposed to mess with. This would at least have the starts of branches that are basically pushed from an external thing. Um, that makes me a little bit squeamish, because I, I don't want to go to the um, 
you know, Red Hat, there are Red Hat special branches here, but um, I think we think of this as just a special source, and it's, I think the advantages of it are worth that. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of touches on the, the last bullet with, there are going to be things that, if, if we move forward with this, there will be things that get pushed into Git that Fedora doesn't necessarily like. Um, some of the software collections, some of the things that land in RHEL that Fedora hasn't necessarily gone along with yet, it, it doesn't have to be there. But just because it's in Git, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to get built or approved. It just means it's in Git. Which can be the case today, anyways. Josh? Right. The, yes. Yes. So the question mm -hmm. is, um, can we mirror it so that they're always force pushed from wh wh whatever um, mm -hmm. internal or whatever, or have um, Git hooks that enforce that? And the answer is yes. We can definitely do that. It's it's more of a policy shock thing than a thing that we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's trying to avoid having somebody with a fedoraproject.org account try to push something into an EL7 branch thinking that it's Apple when it's not and making sure that they cannot do that. Well, even if they do, if you force them to do it, it's still a way. Or you have a gift book, right? Like, you don't need, my point is, you don't need a full ACL system in Fedora to implement what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, the point is, we don't really need ACLs to solve this particular problem. Too much talking. All right, fine. Hold. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, is that everything? I again cannot read the slides. Yeah. All right. Sideways. All right. So for all of this, as uh, we've had these crazy ideas, I've been uh, relying heavily on Fabian, who's in the back hiding, um, basically explaining what I want reinforcing to him that I swear I haven't started drinking that early in the morning and then asking him to start testing at a significant level whether or not this is possible and he has gone back and forth with the teams with Patrick with Pingu um, trying to keep me honest about what is and is not possible with this try and keep Patrick honest about what is and is not possible with repo spanner we, we've gone back and forth on this a lot so this this isn't just um, a wild idea in presentation. We've actually got a little bit of code behind this to test stuff out. And I have to say thank you to uh, Fabian for what he's been doing. Um, and I, I want to reinforce that this is an initial step. There, there are a lot of things that we can do as we attempt to collaborate between the two distributions. And sharing a little bit of Git initially is one of them. Um, we would like to get to a place where we're doing more than just copying and syncing repos back and forth. We, we're able to get that, but once we are um, a little further down the road with a common authentication scheme that allows for federation between Fedora and CentOS, that opens up the ability to share a bit more. And we can start moving forward a bit down the road for um, sharing other things where it makes a little bit of sense. So allowing for authentication into the CI platform across both that isn't requiring an additional account or an additional account type or anything else like that. We can just start using groups and say, okay, you're in the CI group for this particular project, use this, go do something. Um, we can start sharing tests back and forth because it turns out a lot of the tests for simple things like HTTPD, are fairly consistent between the two projects and what we have in one we have in the other and again that goes back to a thank you to Patrick and Fabian for the uh, the, the secure boot testing for shims uh, which is making Peter do a happy dance off in the corner which is always fun to see um, so it's it's stuff like that that's already starting to show a little bit of fruit for sharing between the distributions we don't have to do this in as much isolation as we have in the past um, so 
the the branching of git the sharing of git is just kind of an initial step to see what we can do and where we can go for the accomplishment and now because there are some fairly opinionated people in the room <laughs> peter Master not be rawhide is the. All right. So uh, you're in favor of this. Okay. Yeah, Peter is in favor of not using master for rawhide. Alexandra. Yeah, so the question is, what is the point of having this all set up on the Git remotes when you could, as a packager, set up um, like different Git remotes and do cherry picking back and forth between those things? Um, people don't do that right now. I think that's the, the thing. So I think having this way encourages collaboration and it makes it the default that um, packages can have kind of a co-ownership between the Fedora and CentOS communities and it sort of enforces that you know, there is a relationship between the two. Um, if, if I can slander humanity as a whole, people are inherently lazy. The more you make a roadblock or the more challenge you put in doing something like that, the less frequently people will do it. And you can absolutely do that right now. But to do that, you have to go to two different systems with two different accounts to do different things. And it's a little more complicated. We do have people who are actively doing that in both communities. And they hate it. This is trying to make their lives easy. We, we want to give people who are doing this in multiple places across multiple distributions one single point to go for everything. Josh, you have a comment on that? or? Yeah, actually, I was kind of hoping Steph was still in here. I was talking to him about this. He just woke up. <laughs> so I'm going to steal Steph's uh, thunder. But he made a good point when he talked about the Fedora and the Fedora Foundation. He said, well, you can do it as an individual. It's different than what you can do as a project, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't shared it across the whole project, you can do interesting out the delta between a rel 7 branch and a Fedora branch and see what that looks like. You get data from it and then do that with that data. So it's not just about solving individual pack packager problems, but it also helps provide a data source that the projects as a whole can use to see how they're collaborating and things like that. And that's, that's like a really poor summary of what Steph was saying, but I thought it was yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. um, Dusty. Uh, do we, uh, 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 Um, the question, wait, yeah, repeat. So the so, question was, um, having basically two front ends to it and doing a mirror, is, what's, is that being too sensitive? What's the benefit of that? Why bother? Why not just uh, subsume uh, CentOS into Fedora? <laughs> that last part I added. <laughs> Damn it, Matthew. Um, so to some extent, it, it is being conscious that the communities are very separate in some instances and very opinionated. The other benefit that it gives us um, is across a couple of implementation details. Right now, the CI uh, instance, as it's primarily stood up, uh, we forklifted uh, the, the Fedora, what is it, Fedora apps or Fedora project apps um, CI that was uh, Jenkins that Fedora was running. That's, that's dead, that's gone. We forklifted all of that into the CentOS CI environment. Um, Fedora's data centers primarily stood up in the Phoenix area. 
CentOS is primarily based in Raleigh. So one of the benefits that we get for doing this is actually geo separation. And we can use the repositories as we sync them for more localized testing that don't necessarily impact the other things that Fedora is doing as far as release generation or anything else. When we're done with this whole mess, hopefully it will just be one system, but then we've got some built-in redundancy. So it's not just, oh, Phoenix is offline, we're down, we're screwed, we can't do anything. It's Phoenix is offline, great, I'll hit the other one because it's still up, it's still there, I can still get data, I can still do my job. Wait, I want to add something in that we haven't talked about yet, which is, right, um, <laughs> it's, well, we went by it in the slide with the stream, okay. stream branching. So, and this is the, the slide I said was interesting, but we didn't put on the chart. Um, and that is, in addition to the release named branches uh, for modules and for also for CentOS SIGs, um, there's plenty of reason to have branches that are named other things, um, what we previously called arbitrary branching, but uh, stream branching, or, or um, and uh, those um, can be built into modules for Fedora, um, hopefully for Apple coming soon, and those can be built into CentOS uh, SIG packages. So I think that the opportunity for sharing in the non-default named branches is really significant, and I think that's where a lot of the interest and excitement will come out of this as well. Yeah, so to answer your question, there are implementation reasons why not to. Um, it helps some of the infra side, and there are a few other interesting areas where doing this and keeping it kind of separate initially gives us some short-term benefit that we can roll into longer benefit once we get a few other pieces in place. So. Milan, you had a question? So oh, I oh, sorry, the Laura's been. We're not talking about merging the build systems yet. This is just Git. So it shouldn't impact the build system setup. It, Fedora's Koji instance will still point to source.fedoraproject.org. It's still Pagger. It still pulls the code from the same place. That, that doesn't change. Yeah, um, you could try to fed package build CentOS packages on Fedora now. Um, they won't land anywhere unless we configure something to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, I like where he went with that. Though. Yeah. <laughs> That's, this is literally just Git, but then the next step is like, oh, maybe yeah. we start sharing build structure. Mm -hmm. right? um, as. <sighs> Yeah. So <laughs> this, this is a down in the weeds implementation detail. I don't want to get into why or why not yet. Um, we have reasons for why we are not using Koji to build CentOS as it exists currently. I would like to get Koji to a place where we can use it to build the system, but that has to happen before we can make that leap. Um, so right now we cannot share build systems we need a common authentication setup in place, which Patrick is working on. Um, I keep throwing arbitrary dates at him to see if I can make him twitch and try to get him to, to you know, work on it a little quicker or just to, to toy with him because it's fun to poke Patrick from time to time. Laura had a question. Laura had a question for long. Yeah. The question is whether um, ACLs could keep you from accidentally creating uh, Git branches you didn't mean to. Um, someone who knows more about Git will have to answer that. I'm sure there's some way to keep you from pushing those things. Um, but so I don't, that, yeah. that does actually bring up um, an interesting point in that as we move to a place where Red Hat can push code into an instance that is shared by both Fedora and Scent, we're going to need a consistent naming convention. Um, one, so that we have a thing that Red Hat doesn't stomp on, and two, so that we know what those branches are. Um, so that has to be something that we'll need to have in place 
if we're doing ACLs in a way that scent can't stop on Fedora and Fedora can't stomp on scent, in theory, we could solve that. Um, but again, I, I would have to harass Kevin or, or some of the other folks on the infra team and make sure that that's true. Um, there was, uh, yes. Uh, currently, as it exists right now, they stay in the two different branches. There, there isn't necessarily merging back and forth, although we would be able to cherry pick from one to another and vice versa. Um, so if there's a common, Josh? You know, like finish your answer and I'll provide some historical perspective for what it is. Okay. Um, so the versions in EL7, for example, are significantly uh, older version locked and patched for what is different than what's in Fedora 28. Um, so they will stay in their, their own respective branches. There might be some fixes that cross pollinate between them, but those branches will stay. There, there won't be a merge back into one or the other uh, in the traditional branch sense. AppStream, that may be different. We may both be building from the same AppStream or same modular content, and that just is how it is. Josh, if you have more than 30 seconds, come up and use the mic, because I don't want to repeat. So the thing to keep in mind with the branch structure that Fedora and Sun uses, there's two pieces to it. One is centered around the release of the OS, not the release of the package. So everything is it was designed when we were using CDS, and we just kind of carried over the implementation <coughs> of the game, right? So like, it's not necessarily something that we redid and built from scratch, but the merging and the, the, like normal game usage that people would do, like, it's just not something. The workflow yeah. that built up over the past 10 years. So Josh is... Because it looks like you're assuming a lot of the bike. You have to take a lot of pre-short about this kit use, but in reality, you're not using the kit branch in the normal way. Right. For <laughs> This this is not necessarily code development get use. This is dist get use specifically. So there there is a bit of difference between code development git and dist git distribution style. Yes, you're right. you're absolutely correct yeah. there. Jo and Josh's explanation for that is that um, we've been doing this for a long time, and it used to be dist cvs, um, and that. Uh, yeah, also that it is very oriented around the release model rather than about package names. Let's yes, get the, Adam from I, over I, there. The, before. the gentleman with the red hat tattoo. How to do that, dude. So you're talking about branching and merging these things. I'm curious if has anybody considered or talked to the factory tree team to see if this is going to fly in any way with arbitrary branching? Because arbitrary branching was a big push uh, and a big topic of conversation. Uh, the question is, have we talked to the, Fedor the Factory 2.0 team and about how this would intersect with arbitrary branching? Um, I'm just assuming that arbitrary branching is, an like, is, from the Fedora side of things, all we're doing is adding several more arbitrary branches that happen to have CentOS and whatever labels on them. So I don't see an issue. Is there something I'm missing? No, I don't know. I, okay. I was so arbitrary branching can't be that arbitrary <laughs> um but yes it should work with within some basic That's guidelines why we call it, it will stream work branching just fine. now well, after, sorry, after, it's gonna work. yes okay good. yes someone has asked ralph if this is going to work was the uh peter you've had your hand up again So Peter has a technical comment, basically that it's much faster um, if you have one shared Git repo rather than two remotes if there's a lot of files.
then they would get Corel. So the thing why the St. Louis would be designated Corel, or like the patients which are in staging or something like that? Yes. Because it would be a really, really interesting concept, because if you know how Corel works right now, it might take you many years to get patches uh, like built and shipped with Corel. So with sample, it could be like a month. So that is, that is one of the problems that we are hoping to attempt to address with this. Um, I am told that I cannot make promises for addressing this, and I feel like that's accurate. But Red Hat is at least willing to allow me to promise that they will review the stuff that lands there. They may not right. accept it, but they will at least look at, okay, we have this fix. This fix came with tests. It passes community CI. That, that gets it a little more than I threw some random stuff in a bugzilla and we'll see what happens a year and a half down the road. Josh, am I overstepping? Uh, no, I'm <laughs> overstepping. I would say that Red Hat is no longer 20 people, it is 12,000 people. And so the conversation that was had will certainly didn't reach very far. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Yes. Something that is being discussed in many different places. Mm -hmm. So to, to some extent, we are attempting to already use CentOS as a test bed for some packages. That is kind of the point for um, like the RDO SIG is an upstream for the, uh, the Red Hat OpenStack. Uh, uh, Josh and Brendan had that in their slides earlier. Um, we have in CentOS released a uh, YUM4 package as a, an additional repository that can be added that basically brings DNF functionality into CentOS. So people can play around with DNF and whatever the alias was to, to use it as yum um, to try and get some feedback that we could bring into the, uh, the, the REL business side for whoever it was that was responsible for that. They put out a questionnaire on the, the CentOS mailing list. Hey, please come check this out. Please use this. So we are actively trying to do some of this. It's just a question of how much we can do and how successful we can be with it. Now we've answered everybody's question. Yeah. Look. Do we do we have any other outraged yelling? I, really, I thought this would be slightly more uh, dramatic than this. Yes, the the gentleman with the tattoo again in the in the uh, what what is the A logo? I'm not familiar with that project. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to, to, in an attempt to fuel an outrage, because he seemed to want this to be more dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam, re right. Adam returns the ribbing by asking what the timeline is on CentOS finally just becoming Fedora LTS. Am, am I allowed to just like drop this on his behalf? <laughs> I, I, didn't I already make that joke once in this talk? I think I did. <laughs> no. Um, so I think uh, uh, in seriousness, there are both pretty strong community brands here that mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, so it's something we want to be careful with and that's again one of the reasons we want to proceed carefully and have you know front ends that kind of look um, like they belong to each community. Mm -hmm. So what's our timeline for this now that we don't have outreach yelling? Tomorrow, can we turn it on? Fabian, Go. what's our timeline for this? You're the one building it. <laughs> soon the famous deadline uh, I, I, I will translate soon as when it's ready uh, I, I am hoping we can have something in beta form the community can play around with hopefully around November I, I am hoping that we're able to pull that off for a, a git instance that we can at least show to the community and say, look here, this is the thing. I, I want to wrap this up as kind of an early Christmas present and say, here you go. Yeah, um, be, yeah, before that would be good <laughs> for <laughs> just saying. I'm going to challenge you. Let's aim for the end of September. Six weeks. Uh, depending on the feature we want to have all in, yes, we can. There we go. He said yes. Uh, six weeks. Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> there, that was the right answer. Uh, I, said, I said depending on the number of features we want to run in, and then one. As, like, remember, iteration is key. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I need Patrick for the repo stand up in for the replication, but yes. You, you sold yourself details, on the blah, deadline. Blah, blah. I was pushing for later. I, um, I'm, I'm not responsible Adam. for this anymore. <laughs> Adam. Can I, can I qualify why I wanted it sooner? Yes, why does Josh want it sooner? So I would like it sooner because if we push it to November, then we start running into holidays, and then people don't pick it up and play with it, and then we don't really get feedback on it until the middle of January or February, right? And that's a long gap to do something and not get feedback. Yeah. Josh would like it before the holidays, basically, because the holidays are downtime, as we saw from my graphs earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, holidays, DevConf, um, no one gets anything done. That line of ribbing, and you think I'm going to call on you again? <laughs> I already did. I called him already. <laughs> Adam is trying to walk back his <laughs> He changed from the, the, the joke into a compliment, so we'll take hey, it. I, you should have stuck with the original, man. The original <laughs> was fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Um, I have... <laughs>